Welcome to this uh, webinar on the teaching and learning online. Obviously particularly important uh, at the moment if your uh, school is closing or has closed. So some of the things that we need to uh, think about before we uh, get started is make sure that the pupils have got their access um, to Purple Mash. So make sure that they've got their logins. If you now click on the uh, teacher area here there is a school closure um, button and within that you can go straight through to pupil logins when you've done that you can select your class and you can actually download a letter to parents which will include a brief explanation about purple mash and the parent portal which will allow parents to actually uh, create their own accounts and log their own children in uh, should they uh, should they need to again you can just print off a, another set of the login cards uh, if you want uh, as well. Okay, so that's probably the first thing. Um, if children are working um, on Purple Mash at home, then when they click save, this is where you'll find the work. So you just click the work button, click on your class, click next to your class name, click on the pupils, and that's their individual folders, and that's where their work is saved. Unless you've set it as a to-do, and I'm going to come to that in a little while, so don't worry about that. If you're looking for work, uh, then what you need to do is uh, click on the teachers area and you can scroll down and you've got Purple Mash in England, all the resources, and you've got uh, early years, so you've got it mapped against the early years curriculum here. If, uh, if you're in England, you just click on the curriculum map there. If I click science here, then you can see that I can just scroll down, go to the relevant uh, topic area, plants, there's my objectives here, there's my activities, those are the links to the activities and these are other suggestions of resources and activities that you might want to do with this learning objective. So there's quite a lot of mapping uh, going on there which will be really helpful. Uh, you've also got grammar resource activities, you've got the spelling scheme of work in here uh, too uh, and you can set for instance here you can set uh, spelling tests You've got the look, cover, right, check, the dictation and the test uh, for each child. That's following the national curriculum. If you want to create your own spelling uh, lessons, uh, tests rather, uh, you can click on the spelling quiz tool down here and you can copy and paste your own spellings in and set that as a to-do, which I'm going to come to as well. Other areas that you might find useful are the calendar area here where you can, uh, you can click on this, you can scroll down to the relevant uh, month and you can see what events are coming up, National Pet Week, um, you can see uh, St George's Day, Ramadan, uh, May Day and where the resources are in Purple Mash that will help uh, meeting those learning objectives. So this teaching area here, the teachers planning area is, and the curricular maps are a really quick way into finding the type of resource that you might want to use. If I go back to the home screen, you could also browse through the different uh, topic areas here. So we've got English, Math, Science. If you click Topics, then you can also go into things like History, for instance, and you'll see all the different history folders. And within those are sets of resources too. OK, so um, that's uh, Finding Activities. I'm now going to look at Setting uh, Tasks. Let's look at setting um, three different types of tasks. So uh, first off, I'm going to go for a multiplication um, quiz. So if I go to the games area here, you can see there's a multiplication times table checker here. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to set it as a task. So I'm going to click set to do. Um, you can see it pops the title in a description. I can put some audio instructions if I want and I could tag it uh, maths if I needed to. Uh, I can set a date for when they want when I want it to be done or um, if I don't put a date they'll get it straight away. I can have a hand in date if I want to give them a time limit and I can restrict access but as they might be working at home you probably want to leave that open to be done any time. Next what game mode you want? Assessment. Now assessment will be the 25 questions, 6 seconds a question, 0 to 12 times table. Um, if you uh, want to change that, then you just click on the drop down and click custom and select the times tables that you do want them to 
um, have questions fired at them from. Uh, you can change the number of questions, the duration, the time per question, etc. Then you can just click next and you can choose which class you want. So in this case, uh, my class is called Earth. That would be for all of the children. If I clicked on the button next to Earth, I could select individuals if I needed to. Or I can select a group that I've pre-made and just click on the group, pink group. They're going to get that work. So there's different ways of setting. You don't have to set the same task for all of the children. In this case, I'm going to go for all of them and just click set to do. And all of them will have got that task. OK. If, however, I want to set a coding activity, I go back to the home screen here. I can click tools. I can scroll down to to code. And here I've got all the different um, coding activities in Chimp and Gibbon and Gorilla. Uh, I decide that I want to give them Snail Race as an activity. So I click on Snail Race and I click Set as a To-Do. Now, um, again, it puts the title, it puts the description. I can put my audio instructions. But here I can set objectives as well. So I'm going to say I want this to be Year 1 computing and it's computer science and I can click the learning objectives that I'm likely to cover in this activity save those and they are attached to this activity I can tag it if I wanted to I can set a start date and an end date if I wish and here again I can select class, group or individuals to do this activity I'll select class in this case and set to do. And uh, last but not least, um, I might want to differentiate a writing activity. Now down here we have over a thousand activities that are already made and each one of these has an edit button attached to it. So when you open uh, them up uh, there'll be a little black teacher mortarboard hat in the top right hand corner that allows you to edit it but for this these purposes I'm just going to show you how to start one from scratch so I'm going to go to the tools and I'm going to go to publish plus and in this case I want them to uh, write a newspaper report so I'm going to click on newspaper report and uh, launch it now here I've got a blank newspaper um, which might be fine for some of my children. I could set them the activity, they no, don't need any help and support, so I will just save that as News 1. The next thing I might want to do is add some sentence starters for some of the children. So let's just say I've done that. It can be News, oops. news 2. Now, I want to add a bit of scaffolding to this. This is where that little black teacher hat comes in handy, the teacher mode. So if I want to use that, I click on it, and I click OK. And you can see now I've got a cog. So this allows me to modify the activity. So I'm going to click on there. Now, does your project have a word bin? Well, this one doesn't have a word bin, but I have actually made one ready so I'm going to say I want to choose a word bin that I've already made and I've made um, a report word bin here so I'm just going to open at up click OK can you see here I've got a word bin when did the event take place what happened why did it happen and within this I can if I want to add speech support as well I can click on there and record my own voice if I needed to and I can change the text and the tooltip that happens when you mouse over it. But I'm happy with that one. But I can edit it if I needed to. So I'm going to save that. And that can be News 3. For another group of children, I want a checklist. Have they remembered the key things that uh, they're supposed to include in a news report? So I'm going to go back up to here. Does your project have a checklist? Well, it doesn't. I'm going to tick. I can choose one that we've made. So we have made some already to get you started. 
but I've actually made one myself. So I'm going to click Browse, and I've got report writing top tips that I've made, and I'm going to click Open and OK. So now this piece of work, when they click on the tick at the top, they've got top tips about the headline, the first sentence, the paragraphs, the past tense, the third person, and when they're doing the activity, they can go through, yes, I've done this, yes, I've done that, yes, I've done that. So if this one's got a checklist, so I can just save that as news for. So here I've differentiated, if you like, four different ways. Now, I can set each activity from here by clicking share and set to do, or these will have been saved in my work folder. So if I click on my work folder, there you can see I've got news one, two, three, four. And I can simply click on it here and in my teacher bar here, I've got set to do. And here I can put, uh, and I, can, I could add objectives, I could tag it English. Uh, Again, I can set the date, I can set which class is going to do the activity. OK, so let's have a look at how the, the pupil uh, sees this. So to just check what a pupil sees, I can click on the admin button here and I can click impersonate pupil. So I need one in Earth, so I'm going to go for Adam Wright, and I'm going to impersonate the pupil. So you can see I'm logged in as Adam, there's his name up there, and I can click on um, here, because he's got some alerts to say that he's been set some to-dos, and they can go straight through to the activity from there, or you can click on his to-dos, and you can clearly see what he's got um, uh, as activities. So, if he wants to uh, start an activity, let's say the snail race, click on the first one, video tells him what to do, hint in case he's stuck. When you click on the background, the snail goes forwards one. That's what was supposed to happen. Now, it's dinner time, end of the lesson, whatever it is, they can just click the back button, save and exit, log out. And then when they come back to the purple mash, they can click on their to-dos and they can just click continue and they're straight back into the activity again. So it's very straightforward uh, to uh, just come straight out of the activity. They can hand the activity in, they can leave a note for the teacher, they don't have to. And once it's handed in, they can't actually edit it because it's gone to you. So the next question I often get is, well, where did that go? So if I go back into Teacher, you'll find your to-dos under the Data button here. So if I click on Data and I click on To-dos, you can see what's been set. And you can see there's my snail race. I can click Show the work, and there's Adam's work there. And indeed, all the children who have handed in work, all their work will be here in one place. So you can just hop from one piece of work to the other, opening it up and having a look at it. Now, over on this side, because I've selected this piece of work, you can see there's judgments. And they're all greyed out because we've not made any, but we did set three, and that's why there's three little grey uh, blobs here. So if I click on there, I can look at the work and I can say, this is where I think this child is. I'm just going to save that, and those will be tagged against this piece of work. Uh, I can uh, set the child reward as well, if I like. I can say, well, I'm going to give you a computing award, uh, excellence in computing, I think, for that one. And I can also send them a comment. So I could say, uh, great work. Now, if I just click save, they would get a message saying that you'd commented on their work and what you'd said. But I might want them to do something else, so I could say, but... Can you now, whatever improvements or extension I want to set them? Again, this applies to any to-do, not just a coding one. And I can click Save and Redo. Now, if you set it as a redo, 
it will be launched again at the other end and the child will get a message to say that's happened. Again, we can click on here, impersonate the pupil. Oh, just have a little look. Sorry, it's Adam. And you can see Adam's got an alert. There's a new comment on your work. You can go to it from here. And what you want him to do is a little sort of post-it at the bottom there, and he can complete the activity. Okay. Um, if uh, he wanted to access the reward, you can click on there, and that's the one we've got. So you can see the reward. If he does some work on this, saves and exits, hands it in again. Then you're going to find that, as I said before, in the data area, to do's, snail race, show the work, and you can see there's a second piece of work now. So basically uh, you can show progression because you've now got the next version of it. And again, you could judge this one and you could reward that one and you could send comments back and you could set it as a redo if you needed to. Now, the final part of this process is make sure that you close the to-do when you've completed the activity. Otherwise, the children will end up with a huge long list of to-dos. So in, there's two ways you could do it. Here, I'm clicked on snail race here, and I can just click close to do, and I can decide what's going to happen to this to do. I can say uh, the work gets filed to the pupil folders, and you keep a copy. I can just send it to the pupil folders. I can leave the, the work files and folders. So basically, I keep the work, but I don't give it back to the pupils or I can delete everything. There is a warning about that because that will delete all the work too. I'll just go for move files to pupil folders and OK and it will close down that to do and file all the work that's in it into the individual pupil folders. They will find them under their uh, folder there in a little subfolder called done to do's. You can also close them from the front here, so if I click on to-dos, I can see all my open uh, to-dos here. And if I want to close that one again, I can close it and I can select the same action as well, or a different one. And that closes that. So you, there's two different ways uh, of closing those, uh, if you wish, but you'll see all the open to-dos from the front of your to-do list here. OK, um, we looked at this data dashboard just now to, to access the to-dos, but if anything that you've set them has a score associated with it, then you'll be able to access the scores. So a spelling quiz, a, um, a multiplication check like this here, and again I can see how much they've scored on the multiplication check, and I can click on the little button to open it up and see where they've got answers wrong, so I can see five times table not so great, three wrong on that. Um, I can also see any judgments that I've made, so if I click on the judgments and I click computing and year one and computer science for instance, I can see here's some I made earlier, you can see the children and where you've uh, rated them in terms of where you think they're at, emerging, exceeding or expected and they're colour coded and you can export that as an Excel spreadsheet if you like. So if you've made judgments about, about work then this area you can access that and again with rewards if you want to see how many rewards you've set for each child you can just see all the subject areas, the children's names and how many rewards you've given them and you can even see that by achievement as well if you want to. OK, so that's the data dashboard and keeping on top of uh, the work that's been uh, handed in and if you've assessed it, how you can um, assess it. So, we can set a lesson as a to-do. If you wanted to do 
something like a video introduction, uh, then what you can do is um, upload an MP4 video into, say, the work area of the of the class folder. So if I if I popped it in there, for instance, I would just click on this button and upload an MP4 that I'd recorded. Uh, but you could also embed a video uh, in a blog, and you can make blogs in Purple Mash. If you want to make blogs, you click on the admin button and you click manage blogs, and you could just create a, a new one by clicking the plus button. Okay, if you want more information about blogs, there's a little video here that will tell you all about it. And there's also uh, some notes in the, um, in the teacher's area. I used Screencastify, and you can see there's a little button there, that's the one. Uh, that will allow you to record your screen, it will allow you uh, to record um, a web cam uh, of yourself, and at the end of the recording, you can have an embed code or you can have you can download it as an MP4. So, again, if it was an embed code, you could put it in the blog and it would sit within the blog. If it was an MP4, you could upload it into the uh, pupils area. So, uh, those are a couple of options. Again, the link to it is in the uh, notes um, on uh, on Purple Mash. Now, while the children aren't in school, you might want to share work with them. So children have handed in work and you've thought, oh, that's great. Let's inspire the others by sharing some of it so they can see what they've done. An ideal platform for that would either be uh, the, a display board or a blog. Now, the main difference between them is a display board will allow you to show multiple pieces of work and you can create uh, your own um, blog, uh, sorry, your own display board. And you can see, you can decide who can see it, uh, whether or not uh, it's visible to uh, parents or not. Uh, but full um, instructions are here in a little video within display boards. If you uploaded uh, the lesson to a blog or work to a blog then children will be able to comment on that so if they were creating their own games they would be able to comment on each other's games. Nothing goes on the blog or display board unless you've approved it so you don't need to worry about, uh, about that remotely. The Access to them is up here, so if you click sharing, you'll see any blogs that can be uh, any display boards that have been shared. You'll also be able to see any individual uh, pupil blogs that individuals have shared, or you can see any um, blogs that uh, you've created for the class. So there's a volcano blog here, I've done a World War II blog, there's a Vikings blog, so you can have topic blogs, uh, uh, you can have. Um, children uh, blogging about their experience of school being closed uh, and again uh, don't worry about the personal blogs because they can only be seen by the child and the, and the teacher they can't actually be shared unless the teacher decides to do that uh, the display boards show multiple pieces of work uh, all in one uh, place so you can open up uh, these quite easily and you will see a piece of work. This has only got one piece of work in, but it will show you eight pieces of work at a time and then scroll to another board. You can com also communicate with the children if you wanted to by email. So if I click in the tools area and scroll down to email here, I can email them uh, directly. I can change the settings for the email because the default setting is that the children uh, would not be able to email each other directly. You might want to switch that on for a period of time. You can switch it on, you can switch it off. But what you might want is the ability to be able to email pupils with work and messages 
and they can email you back. So you could even set work that way if you if you wanted to, or send them information. If they get an email, it will uh, be indicated on their uh, alerts. There'll be a little message on their bell to say that they'd uh, got an email from you. There's lots of email activities as well, of course, that you could set them. And indeed, with Two Respond Creator, you can create your own email um, activity. OK, so what I've done is I've given you a quick overview of the sort of things that you can do on Purple Mash in terms of setting work for pupils, uh, managing it, uh, assessing it if you, if you want to, and also sharing uh, the work. You can, if you wish, collaborate as well. So in the tools area, there's particularly uh, of note are to write where uh, they could collaborate on a word processor. I would recommend that this is for groups, really. So you could set a group, a task of um, doing some research on, say, Roman food. And that group could look in books, they could look on the Internet, and they could compile uh, all their information on Roman food. And you'd be able to see who's done what uh, because they're colour coded um, each child's contribution. You can also use things like to connect for ideas of writing, so that's really good if you wanted to um, collect pupil responses um, to a topic in real time. And you can actually collaborate uh, and build your own um, database as well. So to investigate is also collaborative if you wanted to use that. I mentioned that you can set uh, work to groups of children. If you want to do that, just go to the admin button up here, click on create and manage users, which also has a cog on it. Click on the groups button and just click add a group. You can give the group a name. I'll call this rainbow group. I could say this is an um, English group, I can add the staff who need to be able to see it, and I can add the pupils. If I need to search for them, I'll just put my Earth class in there. And I can select the children that need to be in this group, select them, and just save. And that's a new group. So I'll be able to set work by group, I'll be able to email a group if I needed to. If you're using um, Minimash, the early years uh, software, uh, you can't set to-dos in the same way, but what you can do is uh, you can uh, create topic trays uh, for that. So this hasn't got any trays, but if I click on here and go to trays, sorry, if I click on here and go to pins, I can pin a topic to the front, there's loads of different ones that have already been uh, made, so I can click a, a seasons one in there if I wanted to. If I star it, it's the first thing they see. And you can see they can then access all the season information. But if you want to be very creative, you can use the teacher tools to create your own resources, save them into a tray, and then you can pin them to the front. So you can direct children towards work. Uh, if you uh, if you wanted to. If you need more information on that, uh, get in touch. We have done videos and walkthroughs on how to do that, but there is a help area within Welcome Minimash that Minimash. tell you uh, how to do a lot of uh, the main tasks within uh, Minimash. I hope you found that useful. So I've taken you um, round Purple Mash if you need more help and support while your school is shut, we aren't. So if you click the Teachers button here and scroll on down, don't forget there's the school closure information here. But if you carry on down past the curricular maps, uh, we'll be, uh, you could book a one-to-one -one with one of us to go through anything that you needed to look at particularly. It could be email, sharing, creating folders, doesn't matter what it is. You can... Um, contact us about that and we'll book in a slot for you. They're free. 
um, webinars. We're running a whole series of webinars still. Uh, you can book on any one of those and uh, take part in, in that or uh, book one uh, for in the future. As I say, if you miss it, we'll send you the link for it. And what we've got under construction at the moment is a training area with built-in courses. It's not currently available, but it should be in the ne next week or so. You can see in my uh, version of this, the beta version, that it is actually uh, there. But that's something to look out for as well. Don't forget, each program has a built-in video guide as well. If you need to get back to me personally, it's andrew at twosimple.com. Good luck uh, with your uh, potential school closures. And I hope you all keep fit and healthy. Thanks very much.